choice lies between military conscription and corporal punishment. <laughs> written in advance. It says here, the minister's going to propose five years compulsory national service in the Falklands for all young men whose parents earn less than £20,000 a year. And therefore, we are going to introduce a five-year period of national service in the Falklands for all young men whose parents earn less than £20,000 a year. <laughs> Lights bouncing off your forehead. Huh? There we are. That's better, isn't it? Damn! Leave it alone. It's not dry yet. I shall report this to the Committee of Privileges. Do you want to be in this show or not, love? Love? Because we can always have a by-election and recast. <laughs> Three-ring circus. Dear, are you staging a military coup? I don't mind. Just give me five minutes to phone my stockbroker. Yeah, I've come straight for my weekend manoeuvres. Well, so have I. But I wash my face afterwards. No, no, no. My territorial army manoeuvres. We were practicing blowing people up. It was jolly exciting. And then I got lots of... I have a dream! More later. <laughs> have a dream. I was lying to attract attention. I'm a politician. Right up your street, isn't it, Mr. Hart? This vulgar degradation of a noble tradition. The fellow's wearing makeup. <laughs> you bet I am, fatto. Do you like the highlights? I was swathed in beggar foil from dawn. Anyway, you're a fine one to talk. What's this, you pet gerbil? <laughs> Give us a tune, hacker. He's come to the end of his speech, and the director wants you to go on next. Oh, what? Yo. He loves the suit, the hair, the whole image. But you can't speak next to Stahl. The Labour shadow spokesman has to reply to the minister. Why? Seven hundred years of parliamentary protocol. Well, it's fair dues. Your lot balls up our restrictive practices, now we're here to balls up yours. Don't worry, I'll speak next. I'm not lobby fodder. I have my own heartfelt views on this issue. What is it? Conscription. You're a guest. You got it. <laughs> Looks even better on a bedroom chair. Your bed or mine? Oh, well, if you're going to play hard to get, forget it. <laughs> and make Britain a safer place. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's a real honour to be here this afternoon, and I mean that sincerely. <laughs> to the honourable members and uh, to all you wonderful people sitting there at home, I'd just like to say that I oppose conscription with every breath in my perfectly developed body. <laughs> we don't need to draft our hooligans into the army. There's more than enough drunkenness, vandalism and mindless violence in the army already. <laughs> and conscription would take hundreds of thousands of young consumers out of the economy. Young people who are queuing up to buy the latest sound sensation. Yes, the Ajuki personal compact disc jockey. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Speaker, which you can order from Abbey Stereo on mail order. Call 2627513. So televicious. The star is born.
most charismatic politician since Norman Fowler. I'll take that as a compliment. Hello, Alan Bastard, parliamentary supernova. You want me to appear on What's the Question? Uh, I see. How much? <laughs> well, that's the taxi fare negotiated. Now let's talk about my fee. <laughs> But what does Nicholas Parsons get? <laughs> does he really? My wife has to pay me that much just to sleep with me. <laughs> and then, of course, the sex comes extra. <laughs> well, try adding a couple of noughts to the end of it. No, I can't hold on. Steven Spielberg's been waiting in the foyer for three weeks. <laughs> Sarah, darling, ghastly to see you. <laughs> Have you come here to join my fan club? No, I'd rather drink arsenic. Really? <laughs> Nip down the chemist, was he pierced? <laughs> come to deliver your fan mail. Those cheap envelopes with their second last stamps are beginning to clutter up the front hall. Oh, and you owe me £500. What? Well, I'll have to buy a new overnight bag to bring them here. Ah, uh, who's that? Oh. <laughs> it's an inflatable Allen. $49.99, including postage and packing. <laughs> See, they made it to scale. <laughs> they come from Scandinavia, where it happens to be very cold. Who on earth going to buy this obscenity? Oh, there's so many women and so little time. <laughs> I think the pump's broken, Alan. Well, you've got a mouth, haven't you? Use that! <laughs> Unless, of course, Sarah would like to do the honours. No, I'd rather go down on the Titanic. <laughs> Gosh, is it going to take forever? It's not that lifelike, then. I think you should know, Bastard. I'm reporting you. <laughs> Good grief. Fletcher Darby, stop that at once. This is not the Liberal Party. <laughs> Well, if that's going to be the level of debate in this office, I think I may accept that peerage. No, no, so Stephen, you don't understand. Alan Bastard jumped up little Pillock's office. Hello, Alan Bastard here in person. Well, you managed to find enough money for me. Wonderful. Tell Nicholas I'll see him on the set. Well. Guess who's going to be the new star of a... Uh, what's the question? Gosh, what's the question? It's a marriage made in heaven, unlike ours. Alan Bastard on a game show so vulgar even the servants don't watch it. You're just jealous because I'm going to be the biggest star in Britain. Everyone will know my name and my face will be in every single newspaper and you'll just be a spoiled, anonymous, little middle-class housewife with a shopping fetish. <laughs> The only attention you're ever going to generate is when they see the name on your credit card and they say, hey, wait a minute, aren't you related to that brilliant, witty sex warrior who's always on the telly? <laughs> and even then, they won't want to know about you. They'll just want to know about me. Well, then, you better pray I don't tell them the truth. <laughs> deserve it. Thank you, thank you. And we are just dying now to get hung up on... What's the question? question? Yes, thank you. And right now it is time to meet our two teams who are playing the game tonight. And on my right, we welcome back our regular parliamentary pin-up, Alan, enormous majority bestowed. <laughs> What have you been getting through in Parliament this week? Uh, two shorthand typists in the canteen, lady. <laughs> Faster than directory inquiries. <clears throat> and um, Alan's uh, partner is a shop assistant who comes from swinging Swindon. It's Sonia Ratcliffe. <laughs> On my left, we welcome back our other regular player of the game, who's just done a royal command performance, Roger Kitter. 
How did you find our royal family? Very friendly, Nick. Mm. Especially Princess Margaret. <laughs> Really? Yeah. Really? I tell you, if I play my cards right, I could have a small part in Charlie's aunt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> yes, uh, very naughty, yes, yes. Uh, 9.30 on a Thursday morning, quite obscene. Um, and uh, Roger's partner is all the way from Halifax. Yes, it is Harry Fielding. <laughs> Describes himself as long term unemployed. Meaning lazy, ignorant northerner. <laughs> oh, that's the kind of wicked wit we've come to expect from you, bastard. <laughs> Anyone ever told you you're a creep, Nick? Yes, everyone. <laughs> and now it's time to ring someone's bell and say, What's the question? Yes, so if our two teams are ready, are your fingers poised? Put them on the buttons now. <laughs> oh seven eight three, a Sunderland number. But right now, it's time to welcome our gorgeous hostess, Jenny. <laughs> Darling, don't, don't ever do it. And uh, Jenny is going to bring forth her golden digit. <laughs> yes. And she's going to use that digit to press out this number. And there we go, digit away. Oh, isn't this exciting? I'm to all and the tizzy here. Yes, yes, I do hope they're not working. <laughs> You're joking. Workshy slob's probably still in bed. <laughs> sleeping off last night's 14 pints of Newcastle Brown. Look, Nick. Yes. Do we have to have this constant crypto-fascist drivel from Alan here? Well, I'm... There's a lot of unemployed people in my industry. Yes, it's the first time you've worked for money this year, isn't it? <laughs> Don't be so bloody nasty. Where's your equity card, anyway? You're doing a trade unionist out of work. Well, three hearty cheers. Come here, you... I don't need that. Ow! Ow! Oh, watch out. What do you have to do that for? Bloody Don't hell, you two, this is supposed to be mindless fun for the masses. Then crisis is only a rehearsal. I don't want to crack your style, Al. It's only a three-minute break. It's all right, I've finished. <laughs> Listen, Look, oh, for God's sake, go away! <sighs> oh, uh, Sonia, um... Jenny, it's golden digit time. <laughs> Here, Al. Ow! Now, listen, Al. Are you addressing me? You just said that Sonia in the back of the larder. Of course. Why? What was it like? Well, it's pretty roomy, but the rear suspension's rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> nice one, Al. Yes, now go away. Blimey. Look who it isn't. You. What, you mean it is me or it isn't me? <laughs> no, of course it's you. Your missus has been dishing out all the dirt. My life of pain with Parliament's kinky TV star by Sarah Bastard. <laughs> The show. What the hell do you think you're playing at? What do you mean at this precise moment, darling? An inch to the left, Hugo. You got it. Um... <laughs> Everywhere I look, I see posters advertising your sleazy memoirs. Really? Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> fantastic! You selfish bitch, it's an unmitigated disaster! <laughs>
I'll give you champagne. Oh. <laughs> Don't waste good champagne. We've got guests. This is Clive, my agent, and Clive's friend Hugo, my ghostwriter. Yeah, real pleasure to meet you, Slim. <laughs> so you're the dude who dumped Argentinian nuclear waste under a primary school, huh? <laughs> Me? <laughs> That's outrageous. Yes. That's why it'll sell so many newspapers. Man, and the way you iced your two opponents in the general election, it was wonderful stuff. Uh, but that... We have the evidence. I can't wait till they find out that you provided General Galtieri with those two eggs of set missiles. <laughs> don't worry, darling. They don't hang one for trees and not in peacetime. Right, Sarah, this has gone far enough. As your husband, I order you to evict these two Clause 20 agents from my house immediately. <laughs> and withdraw your article from next Sunday's newspaper or I will blue-torch your credit cards. Ooh. Blaze away, darling. They're paying me £100,000, and I've had quite a lot up front. <laughs> and I'm on Wogan on Monday. Oh, big deal. Anyone can get on Wogan these days. Who's talking about the programme? <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Where do you think you're going? This is 10 Downing Street. Is it really? Well, fancy me not knowing that. I must be almost stupid enough to be a policeman. <laughs> I recognise that acerbic wit. You're Alan Bastard, aren't you? <laughs> I love that. What's the question? Yes, it's terribly popular with the educationally subnormal. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Go on. Tell me an answer and I'll guess the question. Like on your show. <sighs> All right. In five seconds, I'm going to take out your truncheon and ram it sideways right up your... Got it! Got it. What will happen to me if I don't let you in to see the PM? Correct. <laughs> <laughs> I love quizzes. <laughs> Go on, knock her up. <laughs> Cecil! <laughs> I thought I told her to use the back entrance. <laughs> No, no, Prime Minister, it's me, Alan Bastard, a lowly but loyal backbencher on a mission of national security. You're late! <laughs> I've been expecting you. Sarah claims that she's been intimate with over half of your cabinet. Presumably the bottom half. <laughs> and they've told her everything. How much Nigel Lawson has in his Swiss bank account, the date and result of the next general election, and why Rhodes Boyson has those ridiculous sideboards. The party will never recover. Rubbish! <laughs> the Conservative Party is bigger than one oversexed little member. Little? <laughs> Since I've been leader, we've survived sanction busters, pederasts, slum landlords and bigamists. And that's just in the cabinet. But I still win. And I keep on winning. <laughs> so, tell me, why should I stop Robert Maxwell publishing? But I'll be ruined! But that's why I instructed your wife to write her autobiography. <laughs> what? Did you really think that I would let you get away with turning the commons into some sort of tawdry advertising medium? And upstaging me! <laughs> I was just trying to be true to the spirit of Thatcherism. All you care about is number one. I thought that's what Thatcherism was all about. <laughs> of course it is, of course it is. <laughs> we can't, we can't let the common herd know that. I beg your pardon? <laughs> we can't let the common herd know that. They have to believe the Conservative Party stands for God and a strong pound. Not greed and an untraceable Deutschmark account in the Cayman Islands. Now get out! <laughs> oh, for God's sake, Dennis, do go back to bed. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Wake up! <laughs> You're in big trouble. I'm sorry, Alan. I was just packing your bastard scenes of blues albums, and I, I must have snoozed off with boo. No, 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 no. Forget about that. Listen. There's a vicious story about the Prime Minister's private life coming out in next Sunday's People. Hmm. And nobody knows who's written it. Well, you know how nobody likes you and you haven't got any friends? <laughs> yes. Well, they're all saying it's you that wrote the story. Me? Yeah. And they're coming to get you. Right now. Norman Tebbit's strapping on his Doc Martens even as we speak. Norman Tebbit? Yeah. But Alan, what am I going to do? Help me. Help me. But how? The paper comes out the day after tomorrow. Oh, Piers. God, how I hate the gutter press with their horrid, lurid pin-ups and their ghastly common adverts for the co-op and pond tins and... <laughs> I hate the way they blow up innocent stories. <laughs> blow them up out of all proportion. And, uh, blow up innocent lives. Alan, I got it. Great. I'll get up early on Sunday morning and <laughs> buy all the copies of the people before anyone can read them. <laughs> Oh, that's brilliant, yes. I suppose you've got enough money, have you, to buy two million copies of the Sunday People at 35 pence a shot? No, but I will have. I'll win the bingo. <laughs> yes, you will, won't you? And you'll have plenty of time to fill in all the little coupons while you're lying in hospital with your fingers not working properly. <gasps> it's Norman. <laughs> He's coming to get... Piers! Piers, stop that! No. <laughs> I thought you were a brave, resourceful, territorial army explosives expert. Only on the weekends. Piers, the weekend starts here. <laughs> about the terrible explosion and fire at the new Mirror Group printworks only underlines the importance of compulsory fire prevention equipment uh, as proposed in my amendment. And in my opinion, and that of countless experts, the best fire prevention equipment is supplied by Checkland and Burt, the distinguished experts who have been adapting things down since 1987. Call free phone 345 and just shout fire. 